Hi guys, Rachel here from reachthestamper.wordpress.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this super fun card to shaker card. I did mine a couple different ways, so I have a lot of the, um, these are actually the mica flakes that are in the holiday catalog. I kind of adhered some of them, but you could make this just totally as a shaker card if you wanted to, or you could do what I did. You kind of glued some down and let, let some run freely as well. So let's get started on how to make this. What we're going to need to start is a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and we're going to do this for the background. So I would highly recommend that you use some stays on, or um, if you have, if you like the tuxedo permanent ink. Um, I'm not a hundred percent percent sure. I, I assume the archival black is also completely permanent, but it's up to you. But I would definitely use something permanent because we're going to be using a little bit of not watercoloring, but blender pending, and you don't want the whole um, image that we're going to make to run. So what we're going to do first is we're going to use the snowman. And this is from the Christmas Magic stamp set. There's a train, a pole, a snowman, a bell. Great for Polar Express fans if you have some in your family. I have one that loves trains, so that's why I got this set in the first place. But I thought this would make a really cute card. Now, the only thing you want to do is I would highly advise two things. Either stamp your image high up here so you make sure that you get it all in. Or the other thing you can do is when you make your... Um, card just be very aware of where you place your square because I put mine a little bit too low in this and you couldn't see the snow mounds that I made so that's just my one tip okay so I'm gonna put this here as well okay very nice and the stays on actually does come off pretty easily if you clean it right away and they also make a stays on cleaner that you can get stampin up doesn't carry it but they do make it if it makes you happy to have your stamps completely clear so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a little bit of coloring, okay? So I did use quite a lot of markers for this, and I'm going to try to remember all of them that I used. But the main one I did first is I went with Soft Sky. I'm going to just run the heat tool over this just to make sure this is absolutely set before I start watercoloring. Okay, that's good enough. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the Soft Sky. I'm just going to make a little puddle in there. And I'm going to use the aqua painter and I'm going to just pick up some of the ink. You can even add a little water to make it a little bit more watery if you want. Mine already has water in it, that's why I'm saying that. And I kind of just wanted to give this a little bit of a background. Doesn't have to be everywhere, but just give it a little bit of a depth to the image. This is why the stays on is important or the tuxedo permanent ink because with the watercoloring you don't want your images to run because that has happened to me more than once in the past and definitely not very fun to have a runny image that you're then trying to watercolor on. So I just went over just a little bit and again the other thing you could use if you wanted to is you could use the thick white cardstock because that does make it a little bit more water paintable without having the watercolor cardstock, which is a little bit more of a cream color. So up to you there, and then you're just gonna clean your pen off. Okay, now we're gonna close this up. And what I did is I went through and I went uh, gave some snowflakes, and I'm gonna do those in Pacific, eh, Pacific Point this time. Last time I think I did them in, I don't know what color I did them in last time. But let me just do this one more time. Just make sure it's dry. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna just stamp our snowflakes just randomly. Nope, I think maybe I did use Pacific Point last time. And I kind of went a lot of places with these because I wasn't quite sure where I was gonna cut off my card when I made it. Just because of depending on where you wanna cut your, whoops, where you wanna cut, nobody's gonna see that, where you wanna cut your window sheet in, okay? I'm gonna put that on the side. And now I'm gonna do a little bit of markering. So this I'm gonna to have to cheat because I used a lot of markers for this. So I used, I know I used Pacific Point, Wild Wasabi, Tangerine Tango, is that tangerine? Might be pumpkin pie. We'll go pumpkin pie, it's fine. Uh, Melon Mambo, Garden Green, Smoky Slate, Real Red, Okay, so what I did is I kind of just painted everything how I wanted it to be painted with my markers, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and color this in. And you could do one of two things. You can either use direct marker. If you don't like this and you think it is a little bit too dark, 
The other thing you could do is you can use your blender pen and you can either pick up the ink off of the marker or off of your stamp pad, completely your choice. Both ways work. And I'm gonna just go in a little bit. Now when I do this, so I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm gonna grab my ah, blender pen. Sorry for my arm. Make sure that's clean. I didn't wanna make this too, too dark around the edge, but I kinda of wanted to give a little bit of color here. And I'm also gonna bring this in with a little bit of soft sky as well, just to kinda of give that cool feeling to the snowman, cold feeling. Okay, putting that off. And, whoops, wrong one. Let me grab my soft sky marker. All right, and this one, I just went with the felt tip end and I went on the inside. Okay, same thing around the snow here on the bottom. Now you can also use your blender pen if you want to fill in the rest of Frosty. So you could take the edges of this, make sure that's nice and clean, and you just spread your ink in a little bit. You don't have to, just personal preference. Okay, we're going to go ahead and color in his nose. Carrot. And we're going to just do a little bit more. So green is going to be for the wreath. Okay, and I did the pole in pink. And I think I used wild wasabi. The pink almost looks a little bit red on here, believe it or not. I know that probably doesn't look very pink. That was Mellow Mambo, by the way, not pink. I don't know why I'm having such trouble. I did do some Pacific Point on the wreath to make some of the bulbs pop. Same thing, you could do this one, his scarf, if you'd like. some orange mittens you can make all of this completely subjective to whatever you want it to be I did do the berries on here red and this little part of his hat green this was garden green on his holly and let's see what else do we have here how about we'll do a little bit of elegant eggplant. These are sometimes so dark they look black, but that's okay. We'll do it anyway. Maybe add a little bit of yellow. I think this is Daffodil Delight. There we go. We'll make a little bit of yellow. I don't know what, whose colors these are, but I'm sure someone's very happy right now. And how about a little bit more? Just a little pink on the wreath. A big ball. There we go. Okay. One other thing I want to do is I'm going to take the Sahara sand and just color in the sign just a little bit. This is a fairly light color, so it's really not going to take away much from your card if you're concerned about that. You could always outline it and again just do the blender pen. And we're just going to outline the snow. Sometimes if you just give the outline of something, it almost fills it in the rest of it for you. you. Just fill the inside of that in a little bit since we didn't color that. And I'm going to just take, so this is my soft sky marker, just in case some of this shows. And I'm going to just fill it in just ever so lightly. And then we will just take the blender pen and blend it just a little bit. Most likely, this is just really for depth. Or the aqua painter, sorry. This is really for depth because we're going to try to put our snow down there anyway. Okay? So... There we are with that. Let me just see one other thing. I'm just going to fill his hat in just a little bit with the blue. Just make it look a little bit extra cold. Okay, so that's all the coloring. Again, you can color this however you prefer to color. It does not have to look like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of window sheet, okay? So this is the window sheet. Stampin' Up! sells this. You get two sheets of 12 by 12, 
okay? We're gonna make this for our shaker card and we're going to use our strips, okay? So we're going to pick what our background color is gonna be and I think I'm gonna do something different this time. I think I'm going to go with, what is this? Always artichoke, just for a different color. So we're gonna fold this in half, four and a quarter by 11. We're gonna score it at five and a half. Give that a good fold. Okay, just like so. And then, so this is gonna sit here. So now we just have to figure out, and it's not gonna be exact because we're gonna move it down a little bit. What color do we want on top of it, okay? Other thing with your window sheet, try to keep it somewhere clean just so you don't get stuff all over it and then you have to try to clean it off. So we're gonna go with, how about we'll go with red? Why not? We'll go with red on this one. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to trim this to four and a quarter by five and a quarter, just so we have a little bit of a lip for a ledge, I should say. So let's see. So this will be four, four by five and a quarter. Okay. And then we're going to cut our piece out. Okay. So we're going to get our square framelits. I'm going to move this just to the side for now. We're going to get our big shot and our layering squares where are you there they are okay and we're going to get our magnetic platform that way we can put this exactly where we want it okay now for this one i use the scallop you could use the square you could use the scallop completely up to you i'm going to use um the scallop again just because i like the way it finishes the window all right, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get our red, okay? And we're going to try, let me get my cutting pad. We're gonna try to imagine where we want this window to be, okay? Do we want it high? I'm gonna put this here just for now so you can see it. Do we want it high in the window? Do we want it low? I'm gonna go with a little bit higher than I went the first time, and I just want it centered, that's about it. All right, so we're gonna just run this back through. Okay, and that's all. So now we have our little square. Get this out of the way. All right, so pop this out. We have our little scallop, squ scallop square, okay? So this is gonna go right underneath, and then we're gonna layer this up so we can put our background on and put our snow in, okay? So we're gonna put this on you can put it on with glue dots, you can put it on with snail, you can put it on whatever, with whatever you want, but I'm gonna just use snail. It's not gonna show, because you really would have a tough time seeing under that anyway. All right, so I'm gonna put my window sheet down. Oh, let me put a little bit more over here, because I don't want any of this stuff to sneak out. And I'm just gonna place this down. So essentially, you just want your piece of window sheet or acetate, whatever this is, to completely cover this so it creates a seal, okay? You notice any smudges on this right now, you could go ahead and wipe them off. Same thing on the inside. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out where we want our North Pole to be, okay? Because for my first one, I didn't really love how I placed it, so I'm gonna cut this in a little bit, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, just gonna eyeball about where I want it. So I think right about here. So let me trim this bottom piece off. And then what I did was, the very first time, I actually put some of this um, mica flake. I put some of it so it adhered. This time I'm just gonna let it shake free, okay? So I just wanna make sure this is big enough to fill the window, which it is. So I'm going to just trim off just a little bit of the sides because I don't want it to hang over the card. Okay. So let's just try that one more time. I'm going to flip this backwards so I can see. So that fits nicely. Okay. So now what we have to do is just put down some of our foam adhesive strips. You could absolutely do this with dimensionals. It would just take a lot more because you'd have to cut many pieces. So with your foam strips, the only thing you want to do is just make sure that you have a completely closed in seal. That way you don't um, 
have any of the stuff leaking out, okay? I don't want to keep calling it snow. So you don't have any snow leaking out. You don't want any of the mica flake leaking out. And you could do this with anything, really. I mean, if you wanted to do something where it was just more like a festive card in general and you want to do a shaker card with just the green because it comes in green, gold, and white. I'll put this up just a little bit. It's not going to show, like I said, it would take, unless somebody's going to rip your card apart physically, it would take a lot to get this to be able to see it. So it doesn't really have to be too far from the edge. But you just want to make sure that you do press it down very firmly as you go along. Oops, this one went crooked. Firmly as you go along. I'm going to move this over. So you have a nice seal. Okay, I'm going to do one more little piece here. And just a tiny little smidge I'm going to put here. Let's see if I can fit that in there. Even if it goes in sideways, it's not going to really mess up the card. You just want to have it so that it's not going to get any of the uh, stuff stuck to it. So we'll put that in there sideways. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, just so the whole card stays up, is I'm just going to put a couple dimensionals down here just to give it lift all over. And I also added in a ribbon, so I just want to put that on there before... So we, I use this white ribbon. I thought it was really pretty. We could use, I also have this uh, silver. I think I might use the silver. The red I think is going to be too much. So I'm going to use this silver. This is the, what is this called? Silver 1 8 inch ribbon. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this around. And then I'm going to make a little fake bow. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive here. Put this down. Same thing on this side, a little bit of adhesive. Put this down and just trim it off. And then we can make a little faux bow. So you can make a little actual bow like this. You can just make the little cross ribbon if you want, completely up to you. All right, let me just neaten this up a smidge. There we go, pull this in. Okay, and we trim the ends just a little bit, and I'm going to put this on after the fact, just with a little mini glue dot. Okay, so right now, we're just going to put this on the side for a moment, and now we're going to go ahead and put in our mica flake, okay? Let me put one more dimensional here. I'm going to go with one more here. Okay, so I'm going to put my mica flake in. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can certainly do it now. You can wait. Your choice. I'm going to put it in because I'm going to peel this off. I'm not putting the whole card together yet. I'm just putting, taking this off to put this card on here just like that. So it seals it in. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit in. You don't really need a lot because there's not honestly a whole, whole lot of room for it to shake. And as best you can while you're pulling off your tape, just try to keep your card still. Try to keep that in the center. If you feel better or more comfortable, you could also do this as a full panel card. So you could make this, this white piece, you could keep it so it was completely matching to the size. That way you don't have to worry about anything falling out. So that's also another option. Definitely if you wanted to try it that way on your first card, it's up to you. So what you're going to do is you got to remember now to trust that you put this where you wanted it and that your card is going to lay just how you had it figured out. Whoops, and see that one came off. That's okay. No big deal. I'm going to just scoot this in just a smidge and stick it because behind it is going to seal no matter what anyway because you still have your backing piece that we're going to put on. Okay, so we have all that there. Very gently put a couple of strips of snail just so it will pull this down for you and we're going to go ahead and pull this pull off our dimensional backings okay just like that and 
just going to flip our card over. As you can see, there's a lot of snow, which kind of gives a cool accumulation factor, which mine did not have on the other card. But I also completely, completely recentered this, so I think it looks much better with the amount of snow that's in there versus this one where I had the snow a little bit down to the bottom. So really nice shaker effect. Some of it is going to stick to the window. That is completely normal. It will go back down to the bottom eventually. And also it can kind of adhere a little bit to your card to all the little places. Just make sure you give this a nice push so everything stays in. Only other thing we have to do now is just to attach our little bow. And we're going to put that on with a mini glue dot. And then we're going to just put a little sentiment on there oops as well oh come on now my bow's falling apart please stand by there we go okay so i'm going to put my bow over here on the side just like that okay and then the only thing we have left to do is just stamp our sentiment um you could do this many different ways. You could do it in red, you could do it in white, you could do it in something that's going to coordinate with your card. I do have a piece here of um, two inch, a two inch piece of Whisper White that I'm going to use the triple, ban triple banner punch to punch uh, just to flag the ends of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, so I have a couple things and I think I'm going to do for this one just a little different, sending a little Christmas magic your way. You also have Merriest Wishes. You have May the Joys of Christmas. That's the one I did for the first one, May the Joys of Christmas. And this one I kind of tried to do in like, doesn't even have to be a Christmas meet. You could totally take this greeting off and just make this into a, um, like a, a January card that you wanted to send to somebody. It would be perfectly fun because, you know, we kind of do stop sending cards after a certain amount of time. Or a certain time in the year, I guess I should say. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in Garden Green. And we're going to stamp that right in the center. Okay, just like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually border it in real red. And I'm going to cut this out. Just flag the end. Make sure I don't cut my words off. Another way, if you find that you're overcutting your words, you can flip it upside down so you can see exactly where you're punching. Not sure. Yeah, not looking so good. So we're going to just, we're going to punch our end first. You can always punch punch your end and then we'll go back and restamp our card. But if you can't see your words, putting it in is a good way to be able to find your words without overrunning them. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this on the same side just so we can flag off over here. Okay, and we can completely always trim this down a little bit too. It does not have to be this fat. Remember, it's your card. You can make it however you want it to be made. I'm gonna trim this down just a smidge just so you don't have to have a gigantic card. And I'm going to slide this in just to make sure I don't cut off my words. Nope, we're good. How's that? Eh, a little bit more. Oh, come on, you bugger. All right, all we're going to do is we're going to do it the old way. I'm going to just trim this in myself. Another perfectly viable option. And I am going to go ahead and while I have this out, I'm going to trim this off just a little bit. Same on the top and on the bottom. Since I have my little marker out here, instead of uh, using the sponge, I'm going to just marker the ends of it. Look, now I'm going ahead and just wrecking this. There we go. So I'm going to take my marker. I'm going to take the fat tip, the brush tip, and I'm going to just go over the edges just like that. Just gives a little bit of a dimension. You can make it as fat or as thin as you like. If you put the marker more this way, you're going to get a much fatter mark. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to put this down just with some snail right on here. You could always put a little bit of an extra bling there, whatever it is you'd like to do. But I hope that's given you some ideas. So two different themes, completely different themes, Christmassy, wintery. 
If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email at reachthestamper at gmail.com. If you want to get all these supplies and more, you can hit my online store, which is reachthestamper.stampinup.net. It's open 24-7. You can shop whenever you'd like. If you don't have a demonstrator, I would love to be yours. Also, if you haven't yet, please follow me on Facebook under Reach the Stamper. You can find me on YouTube under Reach the Stamper. And if you haven't, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thanks for taking time to watch.